Hello, my name is Michael Weldon, and I would like to present some information about Web 2.0 tools and how they can be used in the classroom. In this presentation, I will explain what is usually meant by Web 2.0, and then discuss some of the most commonly used Web 2.0 tools, such as blogs, podcasts, and wikis. Finally, I will give some examples of how these tools can be used in the classroom in general, and then the mathematics classroom in particular. What do you think of when you hear the phrase Web 2.0? Often, versions of technological products are given new numbers as they are developed. The first version of a product would probably be called version 1.0, and a revised model might be version 1.1. More versions that are gradually improved would be called versions 1.2, 1.3, and so on. If a new version were called version 2.0, this would probably indicate that significant changes have been made to the original product. With that in mind, what do you think Web 2.0 means? It would make sense to think that Web 2.0 must mean a new version of the Internet, and in a sense, you would be right. However, it really is not the case that the Internet itself has changed. Instead, what has changed is the way that people can use the Internet. The phrase Web 2.0 typically means the development of Internet applications that emphasize sharing and interactivity. Web 1.0 primarily emphasized the delivery of information like the reference section of a library. Web 2.0 is more like meeting with a study group in the library and using the library's resources. You might even decide to meet with the reference librarian. Some of the most popular Web 2.0 tools are applications like blogs, podcasts, and wikis. All of these tools allow the user to interact with the creator of the tool and usually with other users as well. The word blog is short for the term web log. A blog can be thought of as a digital diary. In fact, when blogs were first developed, most were typically just that, a set of online diary entries. People would write about what was going on in their lives and post that information on the Internet. Almost immediately, tools were developed that allowed readers of the blog to comment about what they had read. This allowed communication between the author and his or her readers, and even between individual readers themselves. You can still find blogs that are primarily personal diaries. However, many people have realized the value of being able to present information to an audience and get nearly immediate feedback. Many blogs today are organized around a particular topic, such as politics, a specific career or profession, or a hobby or interest. The author of the blog presents some thoughts about an aspect of the topic and can even include images or videos that illustrate his or her points. The readers of the blog can comment about the points being made and offer their own opinions. The author often responds to comments and readers can even begin conversations of their own. This type of application can result in a vigorous exchange of information. Usually this means that knowledge is shared and developed and that new relationships are formed. Sometimes, however, the conversation can become controversial and even heated. In this type of situation, the blog author may need to intervene to cool people down. If necessary, Particular readers can be blocked from making further comments, and offensive comments can be removed. A podcast is a series of audio or video recordings made digitally and distributed via the Internet. Although the term podcast might make someone think of an iPod, and although iPods can certainly be used to play podcasts, podcasts do not have to be played on an iPod. One of the key features of a podcast is the ability a user has to choose to receive new episodes automatically. There is also usually an archive of past podcasts available online, probably through a website. As with blogs, 
podcasts provide the author a way to communicate information to a large number of people at low cost. Podcasts are often paired with blogs to provide subscribers a way to communicate back to the author. Anyone could make a podcast about any topic imaginable. Really, the sky is the limit. I imagine there are even podcasts about astronomy and looking at the night sky. One of the big advantages to podcasts is that they are portable. The subscriber does not need to be at a computer to listen or watch, since it can be uploaded to a device such as an iPod or a smartphone, which the subscriber can take anywhere. A wiki is a website organized about a particular topic that is created and edited by a large group of users. The author of the wiki sets up the structure and makes some initial entries. After this, readers are encouraged to add more details to the author's posts or even create new pages that contain information about other aspects of the topic. As more and more pages are added, users may begin to notice errors on some pages. A user can edit a page and change the error. Since whole sections of the wiki could be deleted by a single user, the original author usually maintains some control over which users can perform certain tasks. Also, a history of all changes made and who made each change is maintained. At any time, the author could decide to revert to an older version of the wiki. Along with each page of information, there is a discussion section where users can discuss the changes being made and offer opinions about whether they are correct or not. Wikis have the potential to allow a community to pool its information and develop new knowledge and insights. The amazing interactivity of these Web 2.0 tools make them well suited for classroom use. Perhaps I should actually say out of classroom use. These tools provide a way for the teacher to interact with each student and for students to interact with each other. A teacher could require each student to create a blog and make postings to it as a way to encourage writing. Students could comment on each other's blogs, and the teacher could also comment to suggest improvements and possible new entries. The teacher could also develop a course blog as a way to share information with the class. Students could develop a podcast about a topic as a class project. Each episode could be about one aspect of an overall topic. The teacher could make a podcast that would give an introduction to each lesson. Finally, a whole class could use a wiki to explore a special topic. Groups could be assigned pages to develop and other groups could be encouraged to offer suggestions for improvement. The teacher could use a wiki as a place for students to ask questions so that the wiki would become an FAQ or frequently asked questions list. All of the ideas for Web 2.0 tools in the classroom could be implemented in the mathematics classroom as well. Here are some additional ideas. The teacher could maintain a blog of applications of the mathematics being taught. Students could post comments including information they know or information they would like to know about each application. As the course proceeded, each entry would add another application. This could even become a source of ideas for student projects. Math class is a great place to use a podcast. It seems like students could always use more example problems, especially when they get stuck doing a homework problem. Since the podcast is portable, they could view episodes at home. A podcast of example problems from each section of a textbook would be a valuable resource for students. Sometimes there are problems that can be solved in many different ways. A class wiki could be used to explore this, with a separate page for each problem-solving method. Students could post examples of problems for each method and could also post tips for how they decide which method to use. I have only been able to examine a small number of the ways that Web 2.0 tools can be used in the classroom. Although blogs, podcasts, and wikis are great ways to make education more interactive, 
There are many other tools out there that can also be used. What do you want to do in your classroom? How do you want to make your class more interactive? There's a whole world of information available to you and your students, and Web 2.0 tools can help you discover it together.